So I just wanted to give a general go over of how we approach GU trauma. Uh, you should, I would suggest watching this uh, video before looking at the distal and proximal uh, GU uh, lectures and then watching this again after. Uh, so you can kind of look at it in retrospect as well. Uh, GU trauma is rather complicated and that's just because the genitourinary anatomy is kind of complicated and as a matter of fact it's so complicated that there's its own specialty called urology. So most of the time when we have a patient with GU injury we're going to be in close consultation with urology. So the anatomy of the GU system, I know this is really basic, but we'll just review here. We've got kidneys. Uh, kidneys conduct urine through the ureters. Ureters conduct urine through uh, into the, down into the bladder. Uh, this is on a female. Uh, and then the bladder uh, collects urine and ultimately uh, conduces the urine down through the urethra. So the kidneys are the most commonly injured part of the GU system. However, because of their great vascular supply, they can usually be managed conservatively. Uh, and that's uh, a good thing because you wouldn't want to operate on something that's got a really good vascular supply because it increases your risk of bleeding. The ureters are the least commonly injured part of the GU system. And something that sets this apart from the other three is that this one's very difficult to diagnose and often presents later with an infection and a flank mass. And that flank mass is usually containing blood and urine, which is extravasated from the compromised ureter. And that gets infected. Uh, the bladder commonly presents with gross hematuria when you catheterize the patient, either if it's a Foley catheter or a suprapubic catheter, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is usually gross hematuria. And um, if you think uh, of uh, why that might be, it would make sense. There's, again, lots of vasculature around the bladder, but uh, where would that blood go? It would go straight into the urine, and that urine goes straight out. So there comes your hematuria. The urethra is almost exclusively a male injury, um, so I'm not sure why I have a picture of a woman here, but uh, it's almost exclusively a male injury because the urethra in the male is so much longer. Uh, it can be 8, 9, 10 inches long, uh, whereas in a female, it's usually not much bigger than your middle finger. So uh, this is usually a male injury. The big thing here to look for is blood at the meatus. That signifies a urethral injury until proven otherwise. It can also be a boggy prostate, high riding prostate, uh, or if you don't have any of that and you try to insert a Foley catheter, you can have difficulty inserting the Foley catheter because of the disruption of the urethra. So just in general, how you approach this, uh, hematuria is a common thread uh, in most trauma to the GU system, but there's some exceptions. Uh, kidney, Trauma doesn't necessarily give you hematuria. Uh, your, your, uh, ureteral trauma, trauma to the ureters, uh, usually uh, doesn't always give you hematuria. So there are some exceptions. Uh, most GU trauma is non-life-threatening. There are only a couple exceptions, and they are to the kidney. Um, and that's, again, because it's very vascular. Uh, you, you can get, if, if you get enough trauma, you can bleed out. So the major exceptions are if you have multiple severe lacerations of the kidney, which is considered, uh, a lot of people call it a shattered kidney because it looks like shattered glass when you, uh, uh, when, when you look at it because there's multiple fragments, um, or large vessel disruption. So let's say that you compromised the, uh, the main renal artery. That's obviously going to be a problem as far as bleeding. Okay, most GU trauma is caused by blunt injury and fractures of the pelvis. The pelvis, when it's fractured, can be sharp, and that can uh, cause laceration to surrounding organs. Pelvic x-rays are always taken as part of your initial trauma imaging workup. So just like your chest x-rays, you're going to get a pelvic x-ray as well because pelvic uh, injury is so common. 
uh, about, I can't remember the number, I think it's about 10 to 20 percent of all trauma patients have some kind of genital urinary trauma. Penetrating, to the, uh, penetrating trauma to the pelvis will necessitate surgery. Um, not necessarily immediate surgery, but it will necessitate surgery uh, at some point. A very important physical sign, as I alluded to earlier, is blood at the urethral meatus. And the reason this is important is not only because it signifies urethral damage, but also because it's an absolute contraindication for Foley catheterization. Uh, other symptoms that may point you towards urethral damage, in which case you would not want to fully catheterize, would be the high riding or boggy or non-palpable prostate. Uh, retrograde urethrogram is done if urethral damage is suspected, and this is uh, a uh, where you use that fluorescent dye, goes into the urethra, and you take a picture, and you can see if there's any extravasation. If there's extravasation, you know that the urethra has been uh, disrupted. If there's not, if the urethra looks totally normal and uh, the dye goes into the bladder, then uh, you can rule out a urethral injury. Uh, so the retrograde urethrogram is a test that's done when you suspect urethral damage, uh, and it can help you uh, diagnose or rule out urethral damage. Uh, remember that if there is urethral damage, no Foley catheter. I can't stress that enough. I can almost promise you that you'll get that as a test question. Some clues to GU trauma are uh, lumbar or lower rib fractures. Your kidneys sit up by your lower ribs, so if those are present, uh, you should suspect a possible renal injury. Pelvic fractures, your bladder and your urethra sit down in there, uh, so that can injure those parts. Abnormal prostate exam, uh, when you do your digital rectal exam, you should definitely think urethral injury, uh, as well as if there's blood at the urethral meatus or if there's a uh, perineal or scrotal hematoma. Uh, injury to the uh, uh, more distal part of the urethra can cause a hematoma into the, the penile skin, and it can actually extend up uh, into the peri uh, peritoneum. Uh, as well as then into the scrotum, because that's consistent with the abdominal wall. Gross hematuria, you should think bladder. Flank pain or hematoma can really be any of these. Um, I would say probably except the urethra. Uh, and then shock, usually this is renal bleeding. And so if there's pelvic trauma and there's shock, you're thinking renal, significant renal bleeding. Um, of course, the initial step there then is going to be to resuscitate them. Ruling out a urethral injury always is going to take precedence over evaluating more proximally into the GU tract. So if you suspect urethral injury, stop right there, rule out the urethral injury, uh, or rule it in if it's there, uh, and then you can go on to evaluate the rest of the GU tract. But if you suspect a urethral injury, you need to evaluate that first with an RUG. Now, uh, in women, for the most part, if they don't have blood at the meatus, that rules out urethral injury because it's so uncommon. But with men, we have a much higher index of suspicion. Uh, the treatment of GU trauma is extremely complex, as I mentioned at the very beginning, and it's pretty much outside of the scope of the USMLE as far as how we treat all these different things. It's important to know that you're going to be in close consultation with urology, uh, and when the GU trauma is confirmed, when we know it's a urethral injury or it's a bladder injury, they're going to be the ones that are doing the treatment. The most appropriate initial diagnostic tests by organ, if you suspect kidney damage, it's a helical CT with IV contrast. If you suspect the urethral damage, it's also a he helical CT with IV contrast. For bladder damage, it's a CT cystogram. And for urethral damage, it's the retrograde uh, urethrogram. Okay, so I made this algorithm here uh, that you can think of when you're kind of going down the uh, thought process of how you deal with the GU trauma patient. So if it's blunt GU trauma, which is the most common, uh, then 
course, you should make sure that you have your pelvic x-ray uh, so you know if there's any bony injuries. And then, of course, attend to any critical injuries. So if they have a tension pneumothorax, you're dealing with that first. Um, so the first thing you're asking yourself, is there blood at the meatus? If there's blood at the meatus, you're going on to do the retrograde urethrogram. And if it's abnormal, showing that there's urethral injury, it's a urology consult. You don't need to know how to treat it, just know it's a urology consult. If there's no blood at the meatus or the REG is normal, then you can go ahead and pass the Foley catheter. If there is gross hematuria, which points you towards bladder injury, you're going to get a CT cystogram. I also should add that if it's microhematuria in a pediatric patient, we're also going to get a CT cystogram. Usually, if it's microhematuria in an adult, we don't need to get a CT cystogram. But in pediatric patients, it's recommended that even if you have microhematuria with GU trauma, you still get a CT cystogram. So gross hematuria in an adult or microhematuria in a pediatric patient, you're going to get the CT cystogram. If that's normal, you can observe the patient. If it's abnormal, urology consult. If the patient has microhematuria, you ask yourself, does the patient have a history of shock, or do they have a present pelvic fracture? If the answer to either of those is yes, you get a CT cystogram. If the answer to both of those is no, you can observe them. And if the patient doesn't have any hematuria at all, then you can observe them. You may consider CT if it was a severe enough injury, but you don't need to. You just observe them. Now, with penetrating trauma, uh, we are really more thinking of where the injury is. Just the principle of trauma in general, when it's a penetrating injury, like a knife, you know where the trauma is for the most part because you can see, okay, this is where the knife went in, this is where the bullet went in, and this is where the bullet left. So we get an idea of where the injury is, and so we can use that to guide how we work up and treat the patient. First off, though, if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, they need to go to the OR before anything else. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, then we ask ourselves, where is the injury? If it's to the penis or vagina, and this is kind of getting into genital injuries, um, then we need to think, because it's penetrating, we need to think, is there hematuria? Because, remember, the penis carries the urethra, and the vagina is close to the urethra, so we want to get a urine sample um, see if there's hematuria. If there is hematuria at all, uh, even microhematuria, you're going to get a retrograde urethrogram. Otherwise, this is a urology problem. So consult them. If there's injury to the scrotum, usually it'll be there'll be a scrotal hematoma present. Um, but either way, if there's injury to the scrotum, your best initial step is going to be a transcrotal ultrasound. Again, normal, observe, abnormal, urology consult. If the injury is to the suprapubic area, sort of that mons pubis area, um, then you're going to get both an abdominal CT because there is bowel down there, um, and you also want to get a CT cystogram because there's bladder down there. So usually these can both kind of be combined into the same test because a CT cystogram is a CT, um, and so you can just extend it past get the abdomen too. Um, so an abdominal CT and a CT cystogram. If they're uh, normal, you can observe. If they're abnormal, urology. And then if this is penetrating trauma to the lower chest, flank, back, and abdomen, or abdomen, uh, you'll want to get an abdominal CT uh, in addition to other tests that you may uh, be interested in getting. Uh, if it's chest, namely it'd be a chest x-ray. Um, again, if this is normal, uh, observe the patient. If it's abnormal, urology consult. So you can kind of see a theme here. Um, for penetrating trauma, though, it's important to know where the injury is. That's going to dictate how you work the patient up. For blunt trauma, the big question is, is there blood at the meatus? If there's no blood at the meatus, you pass your Foley catheter, and then you check your urine. And depending on how that urine looks, uh, or if there's microhematuria or gross hematuria, you're going to get a CT cystogram or not. So I will explain these in greater detail 
in subsequent sections.